I think I know why jazz musicians wear uh, baseball hats so often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tributaries. Not my heart reaches you, not my aorta. My capillaries spread to the tips of neurons and beyond the falsity of Cartesian space to your thrumming neurons and capillaries and the way they reach both into and out of you spilling and gathering, evaporating and drenching. We have never lived in the space created by natural science. Desire leaps distance more adroitly than any electron. You cry to me with no vocals, no studied plan, no way of getting anything done, but in the twist of limbs, the carry of head, the motion of eyes, both what you are and what you are not, dripping up into you and out upon me, both vessel and motor, receiver and giver, falling into and gathering a greater current, like the breeze, always a flutter, always open windows, drapes billowing in the latest tribulations, always open to you. Never, baby. Because a thin green, a chartreuse, brushed the familiar gray, I thought of you in your old guise, in your old seeming style, and considered how lavender those days were, tropical, amid the snow, and we bantered too seriously about everything that seemed important and missed the loam, the fertile color so often misrepresented. I could talk of your insipid sadness, your guessings at your going, the way you said yellow when you meant canary, went pinkish against maroon dove. And now the slightest gray, say a mist of gray in the azure sky, trips me out of you into long lost considerations, constructions of representation to the third level of abstraction. Be because I simply need a place where I can whistle from time to useless time. It has little to do with accuracy, with honesty or truth, but the day sometimes needs a loop, a hole, a space where considerations drop to mere staged amendments and the legislators lose their paychecks. And I, amid this new representation, whistle into the light of loam which it gives a new say, this round shrub across the street as the divinity of a fat August goldfinch this spring day. Never, baby, say you're stuck. Never, baby. I imagine I'm out of time, right, man? I imagine I'm out of time? No, not yet. Oh. I'll just start this and I'll try to keep an eye on you. I get all fucking freaked out about what I'm doing. I've never known a cat who didn't do most anything. James used to name the numbers of the alphabet backwards. Jean put out fires with gasoline, then licked her paws. Patricia pranced through locked doors as if they were vapor. Simone stretched out fully in the small gap of a cinder block. Duane successfully ate nails and staples, burped and licked his paws. Diane found gorgeous cat clothes in the sewers when she was chasing rodents. Persip survived on grass alone in a way a cow never could. Diamond marketed so well she convinced people to buy air. Ichabod produced 3,642 feature films and chose to live in the gutter. Ichabod liked the feel of fetid water on his sorry, brilliant body. Cats never look like they're trying, but they do. Maybe, maybe not. Carla turned a penny into a handsome prophet. Now she lives in a cat castle. <laughs> Gray turns the world on with just a smile and a purr, and then gets nipped. Positron lifts onto the roofs of tall buildings in a single bound, then back. 
he does this exercise to help himself overcome a problem, low self-esteem. <laughs> Whiskers is so professional, everyone hates her and fears her, then talks about her. Peace Girl tries to make the sign with her paws, but can't, gets irritated, curses. There's some more, but I don't want to take up too much time. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Go, guys.